Oh, hey there. Today in this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to keep your face in the middle of the frame while dancing in After Effects. In Premiere Pro, I don't even know what this dance is. Ooh, what is this dance? Huh? Huh? What is this dancing? Before we hop into After Effects or Premiere Pro, let me give you some tips for when you're shooting to make your life easier when you implement this effect in those programs. Number one is to shoot wider than what you would typically do because you're going to be scaling in in post to fill up the screen with your subject. If you're using an iPhone like I am here that has a wide angle lens, that could be an option. But personally, indoors in this low light situation, it doesn't look as good as if I were to scoot back and just use the 1X or the standard lens on the phone. It's also a good idea to use your highest resolution resolution because you are going to be scaling in. So I'm going to switch this from HD to 4K. To do this in After Effects, it's pretty simple. We're gonna go up to Window and Tracker. In the Tracker window, we're gonna go to Stabilize Motion. Here we have our track point and you can click and make these as big or small as you want to. The bigger you make these squares around your target, the more accurate your track will be from frame to frame. But that comes with a huge caveat of it takes much longer to process the pixels within those squares, the bigger you make it. So typically you wanna keep these boxes as small as possible or else it's gonna take you a very long time to auto track your target. I make sure my playhead's at the beginning of the clip and if you click and drag inside the tracker box, I'm gonna move it to where my nose is right here and move that X right at the center of my nose. Another time-saving tip here is to go to options and underneath this drop-down menu, you wanna hit stop tracking if confidence is below and I believe by default it's 80%. I just stick with 80%. And what that will do is automatically stop your tracking if the track point gets off the target. So if I make this tracking point really small, in order to start tracking this, I'm gonna hit analyze. Now notice that it stopped after the first three frames. So I'm gonna undo that. So if I make this bigger square, all the way out here and the smaller square covering my whole head, I hit analyze forward. Notice that it's not analyzing nearly as fast. In fact, I'm still sitting here and it hasn't even analyzed the very first frame. This is not worth your time. So I'm gonna even hit stop on that. Now, watch what happens if I just make the smaller square, which is like your fine tuning, right on my nose. And then I'm gonna make the bigger square just my face. Now, if I hit analyze forward, I'm not fast forwarding this at all. Notice how it's doing all of the tracking for me. That's just a quick tracking tip for you inside After Effects. And I noticed it got a little off right here, so I can go back to the specific frame where it got off and adjust that one. From this point on, I can still hit analyze forward and it will fix the rest of those. Now that I'm finished, I'm going to hit apply, apply the X and Y to my clip. Hit OK. And now with that track point data on the clip, you can see how it keeps it in the center of the frame. But obviously we have this alpha shining through, which is something that we don't want and is easily remedied. I'm just gonna hit S on the keyboard to bring up my scale and scale it up. And then I'll hit P on my keyboard to position where I want myself to be. So now that I've shown you how to do this in After Effects, let me showcase to you two techniques that could achieve a similar looking outcome inside Premiere Pro. The first one won't look exactly like this. It's just gonna be auto reframing your sequence, but it may achieve what you're looking for if you just wanna keep your subject in the middle of the frame. It's much easier than the second method, which is manually keyframing your anchor point and scale for every single frame. Let me start with the first one. So if you're looking to do this effect where you just keep the body in the middle of the frame and not necessarily your head at a specific part in the frame and you shot it in widescreen or 16 by nine, it's really easy to do that effect within Premiere Pro. All you have to do is go inside your project, find your clip, and if it's not already inside a sequence, you need to create a sequence with just that clip in there. So you could nest it on the timeline, or you could click and drag and start a new sequence with it. From there, all you have to do is go to that sequence inside the project bin, right click and go to auto reframe sequence. From here, we wanna switch it from widescreen, which is 16 by nine, and go to your target aspect ratio to nine by 16 vertical, or if you want this to end up on Instagram as a video on the feed, then you'd wanna do four by five. But in all other instances, if you just want nine by 16, completely vertical video, do nine by 16. So from there, if you hit create, it will automatically reframe your sequence so that the subject stays in the center. Now, again, I recognize that this is for the specific circumstance of converting horizontal video to vertical, but that may be all that you need. If you want to adjust some of the parameters in the audio reframe, let me just go back to my project bin. When it does create your auto reframe sequences, it automatically creates an auto reframe sequence folder. And in there, you'll see all those sequences. I'm going to click on this one inside the clip. If I go to my effects controls and 
click on the auto reframe, it's normally set to default. And if you want a better job of it following your body and keeping it in the middle the whole time, a better option is to go to faster motion. And as you can see here, it does a much better job of keeping me in the middle, except right there at the end. So if I wanted to add keyframes to this auto reframe, all I have to do is go to overwrite generated path, click this, you can see the keyframes and I'll move this to the very last frame and just adjust it so I'm still in the center. So now it will just keep me in the center the whole time. And that's how you can go in and adjust your auto reframe after the fact. Now that I've shown you how to do this technique, if you really want to achieve what I showed you how to do in After Effects inside Premiere Pro, we can make it look exactly the same. The only issue is it's so much more time consuming inside Premiere Pro because of the manual keyframing. But if you wanna learn how to do it, let's go ahead and do it. Inside Premiere Pro, the first thing we need to adjust is the buttons down here on your program monitor. So I'm going to go to this little plus sign or the button editor, click that and bring down my show rulers. So click and drag and my show guides. So click and drag that on as well. You can hit okay. Now highlight your clip and you wanna to go to your effects controls window. If you don't see your effects controls window, you can hit shift five or go up to window effects controls. From this point, we're going to be keyframing our scale and anchor point. We will not be keyframing the position, which is kind of counterintuitive, but I'm gonna show you exactly why we wanna do the anchor point instead of the position here. To begin with, we're going to bring our guides onto the frame, and this is kind of gonna be the same as our target point inside After Effects, except now we're just going to be manually keyframing our subject to the guides. So to do that, I'm going to click and drag from the ruler and maybe put it right here because that's where I want my nose to be and click and drag another guide from the side and put it in the middle. So from this point, I'm gonna hit the stopwatch on my scale and I'm gonna hit the stopwatch on my anchor point. And I'm also going to highlight the word motion next to effects and that will bring up the little bars right here so you can manually adjust it here on the frame. And more importantly, you can see the anchor point. So I'm gonna scale and adjust my anchor point to where I want my body to be. And then I'm gonna click and drag the anchor point on the clip up to where my nose is. And because I want my face to be right here on the frame, I'm going to move my guide up to that space. And with my first keyframe set, you can tell that I have black in the frame, which is something that we do not want. Here is where keyframing the scale from the anchor point works better than from the position. Because my anchor point is already set to where my nose is, I can scale in and out from that point however much I need to. So in the beginning, I can scale up right here, and then I'll go one frame over, zoom in on my program monitor so I can see what's going on, and adjust the anchor point accordingly. And now it's just a game of keyframing every single frame so that your nose lines up on the guide. I hope you can see why it's faster and easier to do this process within After Effects than Premiere Pro, because all of this manual keyframing does take some time. So at this point, because we keyframed our anchor point instead of our position, we can now keyframe our scaling however we want to because it scales in and out from our target right there. So as I start closer to the edge of the frame, I could scale it in so I'm in frame. And then as I get further away, I can scale out and that's how you do this technique of keeping that head in the center while dancing inside Premiere Pro. If this video was helpful in any way, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, I'm at Javier Mercedes X. Here are some videos for you, recommended by YouTube and myself. And until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.